and welcome back to Run the Terra, episode 24. I'm, of course, Grandmaster Dan. I'm Adam Edelman Munoz. And I'm Stan Jersey. We're going to talk about um, a little bit of debate stuff. So we're going to do, we, we, we kind of mentioned it last week uh, with, with Riot's nerf strategy, uh, but that's going to be kind of the, the main part of our debate. Uh, but we're also going to bring you the good stuff, you know, that good spicy drama, uh, cooking it up, serving it right to you. And we're still going to, you know, focus on that meta. So, so, so Stan, why don't you hit us with that meta right now? Oh What's going boy. on? Oh, what, boy. What an exciting lack of change we've had since last week. Um, I can appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we're pretty much in the same spot. Aggro is still kind of the top-tier, tiddly thing to do. Um I've been screwing around with the Basilisk Aggro deck too, and it is uh, it's quite strong. Yeah, um, that's what I found. You, you can really just kind of slam at people with uh, no real thought processing whatsoever. Just kind of let your deck do the work for you, and uh, you know your 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 opponent ends up dead. And mm-hmm. They can even do really clever things, and they're still just kind of dead. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a little little much. Um, still really good, um, and you know a lot of the other things. Uh, the only real control deck sitting up here in the top tier is really um, uh, Brahma Nivea. Um, your kind of combo Vi, uh, Heimer Vi decks are the only other real control decks sitting anywhere close to being um, really good. Uh, Karma Ez is actually back in the meta. That's kind of a, um, a newer development that's looking nice, and it's probably because it's one of the decks that has a a uh, slightly better aggro matchup with things like Eye of the Dragon and um, Claws huh. of the Dragon. <laughs> Cl- Claws and Eyes of the Dragon. Yep. Now and we just need the hands, for- the heart, the soul, and the uh, genitalia, and we'll have the full Exodia. The the Dong of the Dragon, yep. that's, uh, if you will. Yeah, I, I don't like that this deck isn't running um, any of the life gain barrier mcjigger that i forget the name of right now um, spirit, oh, spirit refuge yeah yeah spirits refuge i i don't like that this deck isn't running any of that but it is a pretty pretty tight list here from what i can see um i mean it's four but, mana and you need to get into combat to make it relevant yeah actually uh, I guess this this deck isn't running vi so it doesn't have that big swing potential i will also say uh, that for life the drop of Solitary Monk to three power is probably the reason why you're not seeing Spirits Refugee in here anymore. That makes none, sense. Of other, was... none of these other uh, uh, units are really more than three power early on. Yeah, actually, that, that now that I kind of look at the creature sweep, that does make a lot more sense. Yeah, Health Potion but... is just more. It's just a better value proposition. Yeah, if you were going to run that as a, a side option, and then yeah, I think just Eye of the Dragon is going to be your main life gain stabilization engine here. So, good to see, you know, Karma as coming back into the meta a little bit. Um, it also has the advantage that, of being very good against Brahminivia. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, it's also a kind of a control killer. Yeah, but that's ways. definitely, I'm sure, where, uh, like, well, yeah, TFS, I feel like, ends up being a bit too slow on its Ezreal finish. Like, it just doesn't do as well as the Karma as was doing, which is also kind of dropping... TF is down a bit, I feel like. I'm um, wondering, like, I'm wondering which one's the stronger of the two. I mean, I guess Karma has to be the stronger of the two for a finisher, right? But, like... It is, uh, yeah. TF does have a similar shuffling effect, uh, doesn't he? A flip TF, uh, I think, is actually uh, better than a Karma, but that was my it's way harder to flip a TF. Right. Yeah. But, you, yeah, you, you need a flip TF. And then even then, I mean, it's more that it's better for the, like, long-term value. Like, if... It was just like grinding out maybe against mid range decks, like that would be the thing. But like, you need to end the game. Um, like if yeah. you're playing against Brahma Nivia, TF Ezreal just kind of stutters yeah, its heels. It's, well, it's the, hard the other to thing is that out. a flipped Karma without an Ezreal is a very different thing than flipped Karma with an Ezreal. Very That's true. also very true. Very very true. Does um, does Bilgewater and PNZ have any healing options? Because I think the answer is no, which also might be one of the reasons. They do not. Why Karma is as best. Okay, yeah, that was also my yeah, impression. 
don't think I mean, they do. I, yeah. Between Eye of the Dragon and Healing Potion, and then I guess theoretically in some with Spirit's Refuge, you you yeah. have like an actual decent way of not dying to a, a good burn draw in uh, Karma yep. Ez, and TF Ez, your way of not dying to a good burn draw is it was actually a bad burn draw. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, your, your other option is, you know, to do the best form of healing, which is to kill things before they do damage. Um, Pretty much impossible but you still against kind that of, deck. Exactly. No, I, I mean, have way too I was much. playing that TF as list earlier today, and they literally never like committed an attacker because I killed everything, and I still lost. Yeah. Oof. Harrowing and stuff like that. It makes it really hard. Harrowing is the real killer. There is that I've just been like, ooh, I drew my harrowing early. Time to just start slamming units, even if they're gonna trade. Yeah. I just don't, no. The, I just they don't didn't care. harrowing me. They just did twenty damage, like with spells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that, and stuff. They too. didn't get an attack. The attacking trigger with a. Uh, the one drop, the two one that Legion Saboteur, uh, Demolition uh, Saboteur. Yeah. Yes, they did not get a Saboteur trigger. They played a Saboteur. I killed it. They got no Saboteur triggers, no attack damage, and they ah uh, yes, the turn one Thermo Beam. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know it's it's a it's a very strong deck. It's Ugh. very very good. Um, that was an extreme draw. I I admit, like I don't think yeah. that that's a typical experience, but man, that felt bad. Um. But yeah, uh, besides that, you know, not too much has changed. You've still got a couple of the weird things running around, like your Poro Luxes. Uh, I'm still going to call Yasuo Control weird, even though, you know, we all know where it is. Um, where it but it's now like weird. a weird part of the meta as opposed to just an extreme meme. Exactly, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, uh, everything else is about where it is. Not too many crazy changes to anything like Misfortune Control or Tempo Sejuani. They've just kind of dropped in stock a little bit um, since they're not surviving the kind of aggro rushdown that everything else is providing. And um, they're just kind of in a in a weird spot right now where... like I, I even think you know, like Misfortune aggro is that just a little bit slower than the other aggro decks, but the other aggro decks just keep going over the top of it. The amount of overwhelm that this Basilisk aggro deck has is freaking insane. Oh, um, yeah. It just... You just get slammed and slammed and jammed and sent to space and just fucking fighting the Monstars the whole time with I this I mean, deck. hey, you, what you gonna do? Uh, exactly. That's, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't that's, resist. Um, that's what it feels like. Never apologize. Uh, so, to, to divert our discussion just a bit to something a bit more enjoyable, perhaps, have you seen any new, weird, like... Any builds that surprised you recently? Just you know, something you ran into on, a, on the ladder. It's clearly not part of the meta yet, but you know, something you want to keep your eye on. Yeah, someone from Riot was uh, I was playing against someone from Riot, and they had a forty Teemo deck. So I think that is coming in the pipeline, guys. Pretty sure that's happening. Yeah. Yeah, nothing. I've seen nothing too out there that I've enjoyed. Um, uh, anything? I, I saw someone playing a mid rangey. Um, is this is it just tempo because it wasn't sedge what the hell were they playing it it, it didn't excite me because it looked way too um like uh, what's the way to put it um way too much like they almost got the really cool win that they wanted against me but didn't um where they just kind of played a mid-range plan kept trading with me on aggro to keep me down then just like slammed two elusive units and tried to buff spell them out but then i just had face damage in the middle of all of that and they just kind of felt really bad that their deck did all of that setup to you know have nothing actually happen from it i um, um i saw a person playing a beta like a uh, uh, beta season spiders list when i was playing anivia ooh. control so that felt really good and i won that game um, <laughs> sweet so that sweet. was really cool but nothing nothing new yeah uh, it was I, I would like to give a shout out to the Swain Lux deck that you guys linked. Oh yeah, that I've been, deck. <laughs> I've been playing with that. That deck is fun. I'm not sure it's good, but it's fun. Thank you for reminding me, uh, or thank you for setting up the uh, the easiest softball that I completely just I just got hit in the face by the softball that you just showed to me because I completely forgot about that deck. Yeah, <laughs> it's all good. I've been enjoying it, even if you forgot it existed. Yeah, it's it seems very fun. I like the pairing. From a flavor perspective, I could definitely write some fanfic about that for sure. 
Uh, Swain yeah. Lux. Yeah. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Lux already has, like, four like pseudo canon potential pairings that people care about and that is like four and a half more than i'm willing to care about mm, four and a half pairings um yeah so i guess we can move on to uh some of the spicy spicy news about twitch rivals yar these rivalries go so deep did was there any uh, adam you're you're a resident rival expert was there any sort of um, spicy drama akin to Rope Gate last time? Uh, there was nothing. Uh, they, they've ca- they, they kept the round timer, which is a terrible idea. Agreed. But uh, Swim was like, because going in, people knew what was going on. With, like, people knew that Swim played slow, and Swim knew that he played slow. Uh, and also, like, they were ex- anticipating the timer. It was much less of a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, also, on the the other thing about this is that it's not just a Legends of Runeterra tournament this time, so there's oh, a bit less uh, seriousness going on here. Uh, this is Riot Games Rivals, basically. Jeez. Um, they've got a... It's a three-part tournament. The first part is Legends of Runeterra. The second part was Teamfight Tactics, which is uh, Riot's auto-battler, if you don't know. Uh, the third part is Riot's flag- flagship product, League of Legends. Yeah. Th- and the fun part <laughs> is it's a team structure uh, where each five-man team has to compete in all three events. This is wild. Are, are you telling me that, that Riot Games has more than just this brilliant card game as their game catalog? That's wild. I never knew. Holy <laughs> crap. This is a whole new world. Yes, in you. fact, there is a League of Legends, which is a MOBA, and Teamfight Tactics, which is an auto battler. And they've also got this new Valorant thing, which is a tactical shooter. <laughs> That and, somehow isn't part of the same lore. That's my yeah, biggest that, problem with that. Yeah, that, that, that's a, Valorant exists in a different universe. <laughs> Silly. Should have just made, you know... Except the, for Lux. The, Lux is still in there because she has to be there for all the fan fiction. It has to be. Yeah. has to have some new relationships thrown in. Absolutely. That's the Dan, reason they made because Valorant. because he's so good at knows. ladder, uh, our, our gentle viewers, you should know that because Dan is so good at ladder, he sometimes forgets that he is not the arbiter of truth at Riot and mistakes his fan fiction for Riot fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Debate number one, that is Riot fact. It's true that I Lux am delusional. Lux should be in every game. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, unfortunately, the deck lists have not. They, someone has codified them somewhere, I'm sure, but I haven't been able to find a good UI to work through them. Uh, all I know is that Swim brought some spicy meme balls that we're gonna have some fun breaking down next week, if assuming the patch notes don't take the entirety of the time. All right. So uh, at this point, I think we should move on to our main meaty segment of the day. That's two sentences of meat in a row. What, what am I doing? Um, meat. We've got Meat's back on the menu, on. boys. All right. Uh, starting off this deba- our debates, we got the one we promised you last week. We're going to talk about how Riot nerfs and what we think and whether or not we think they're doing it the right way. Um, Stan, wh- where do you stand on this? How do, you know. Actually, let, let's start. Stan, can you break down what we generally think about what Riot Nerf strategy is so that we have a good foundation to work from? Um, so what you always say is that they're nerfing decks and not nerfing cards. <laughs> All right. I love you this, want me yeah. to break this down instead? I love this. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, just, I just love how quiet you get because you're like, it's like you're being called on in class and you know you're in trouble. <laughs> It's like, all right, fuck. all right. That's oh, my fault. Shit. This is really my. This is my. Uh, this, this is my soapbox to stand on. I should have not made Stan do this. Yeah, um, really. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, just this like, is, why? Why? Am I, why is that me? We're gonna. We're I don't gonna, know. I was. I, I felt. I felt that was talking too much. Uh, I do right. that. We're gonna right, move this so. segment to. I'm now the moderator because I'm nursing, <laughs> what can only be called a sort of mental hangover. Um, mm. So I'll be doing a lot of the moderating. It's a literal today. hangover, I imagine. It's it's not a literal hangover. I've not had one of those uh, ever. Um, but I will I will be the uh, that's and that's actually true. Uh, I will be moderating this first section. Uh, but anyways, Adam, please discuss Riot's nerf strategy as we see it. All right. So the the nerf strategy I've called nerfing decks, not cards. Um, is per- perhaps uh, is my, is my shorthand for saying when a deck starts overperforming, 
uh, what Riot does is uh, rather than find a way in which the deck is overperforming or a way in which, the, the, you know, assessing what is wrong about the deck and fixing it, they find the single strongest card in the deck and they uh, hit it. Uh, which is guaranteed to make the deck weaker, but it doesn't tend to address any systemic problems. So the deck is A, likely to resurface later um, in a similar form, and B, uh, it tends to make the deck more, the deck and every deck they nerf, more middling and less kind of uh, diverse and less different from other decks. Right. So I think... Uh, I think this is a bad thing because, in general, I think card games are a richer and more enjoyable game when decks do different things from each other. And you know, the more kind of diversity of strategy you have, the better the game is. And so, if you take what decks do that's unique and strong and different and weaken it, you tend to make decks. You do tend to take what decks are doing that is the same as everyone else and making it more relatively strong which then makes the game more and more about all the same things in every region. Uh, so with that in mind, that's uh, that, starting from the riot is ner riot tends to nerf the best card in the deck. That's that's the just that's the fact we're working with. Um, I'm against. Uh, so Stan, why don't you uh, tell us why this is not the bad thing to do? Let me let me let me get, take one Ooh. second here to kind of pull double duty in both giving Stan more time to formulate what I'm sure is going to be a brilliant uh, response and also to, to say we need to come up with a very clever, very good SEO optimized sort of name for this nerf strategy that Riot employs, something we could maybe plaster all over the Twitter and Instagram and uh, Pictureverse, YouTube too, why not? Like a clever, catchy name. Um, I vote um, um, card killer. No, that's not good. We're gonna keep thinking. Nerf about bat that. whack a mole. Okay, that's pretty good. That's about exactly. That's a very it's great. Too that's many very syllables. Apt. It's still very apt descriptor. It is very yeah. uh, this, very apt. This 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 whack a mole nerf strategy. All right, Stan. Uh, whack a mole nerf strategy actually good. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I don't think it's done too much to kill diversity in the sense that um, I mean, let's look at for example uh, Karma Ezreal when they first nerfed Karma uh, Karma Ezreal fell out of the meta for a bit and then all it really took was some changes to the meta for Karma Ezreal to be one of the viable you know higher up control decks um, like if you even look at the kind of the charts stating where control decks fall you have, fall, you, have you know Brahmanivia Heimer Vi, Karma Ez. That's kind of the control combo um, deck list. Karma Ez is back to being, you know, the, one of the third best things to be doing in a controlling strategy. Um, I, they haven't done anything that they've put any card truly in the ground. Um, you know, go back to like the Hecram nerf. They didn't destroy any decks. That that one, they you know made it so everyone doesn't just want to play Hecarim because Hecarim was so good that every strategy was playing Hecarim and everything was just a Hecarim deck. It was the exact opposite of the problem. Um, so they're, you know, not necessarily always hitting just the best card and uh, they are... I guess it's the factor going is they're hitting the best card in the deck. I so mean, I guess you, you can also tell me I'm just wrong about what I'm seeing. Like, you, yeah. you can tell me they're not always hitting the best card in the deck. Um... And I mean, that's another possibility. I can be wrong, like just right. on my basic assertion, not just on my uh, what opinion. Oh, <laughs> you could um, be uh, wrong, I, but I, I would kind of agree that that does seem to be where they lean toward. Is they find something that feels like it's the most busted thing in the deck, and that's what they address. And I think that it's not even necessarily the most powerful thing or the most like uh, integral to the strategy. It's just the most busted thing. Like also Grizzled Rangers. Uh, nerf and the you know nerf to badger bear in the same light um that card wasn't necessarily the most like it wasn't the reason to play scouts it just was a busted thing in scouts and now they don't play him as often but you know he's still um he's still a card scouts is still something you can do i think I mean, like that deck in particular has fallen two. off of 
I mean, yeah. Misfortune Scouts is still kind of a deck. Yeah, I mean, like, Misfortune's kind of leaned out of the Scouts um, package and gone a bit more... Uh, well, they've kind of even leaned back into it. Companion Great Horns even in this deck. What the hell? I did I did not take a good look at this deck. I'm actually uh, kind of reeling back from what's in this. But, I mean, yeah, it just changed what parts of Scouts got played. Um, and so I, I think it's actually helped, you know... It, it means that since more decks can compete with um, the decks around, it actually even adds to diversity. Um Again, like, I, I look at the top few decks here, and while some of the aggro decks are doing the same thing, they're doing it in different ways. Like, the top three aggro decks are, uh, you can almost say, a sliding scale of evasive aggro versus face aggro. Um, your control decks are all on very different uh, axes of how they're trying to win the game and what they're comboing off with. Um, your one mid-range deck... And I guess deep is now being considered a combo deck. The, the hell is that about? But even like your mid range um, plans are doing very different things. Um, Sedge is like all just value. Deep is play your big boys. Um, so I, I, again, like there's there's a ton of diversity still going on, even with taking these huge cards and stomping them back down. Um, so, to, uh, to if, I, if I would respond to that, yeah. uh, there's a lot of superficial diversity, right? The cards getting played are very different, are, are, have different names and different text from each other. But the strategic diversity is not as wide as the diversity of cards might suggest. Um, hmm. This is mostly because uh, when you systemically nerf... Um, the ability to control opposing boards, which is what Riot has done, um, and you nerf the the most dramatically outlying cards in various strategies, so that the kind of the cards that support strategies kind of on their own, like Bannermen, or uh, I'm failing to remember another one, uh, Hecarim, I'll, I'll just off the top of my head. Uh, what happens is rather than you, those strategies become less viable, and it, it doesn't make viable. their regions... Thank you. Yes, viable, sure. Uh, it doesn't make their regions Point less uh, competitive. It, may... <laughs> it doesn't make the regions less competitive, but it does change which cards you see play in those regions. And almost universally, what ha the kind of middling point, right, the, the place where every deck has ended up, is face damage your opponent can't interact with. Mm -hmm. um, so Basilisk Aggro does this through uh, the various triggers on their uh, Crimson units and also through Overwhelm. Uh, various elusive decks, obviously elusives. Um, Brahma Nivia even does this with large Nivia attacks, um, though that's kind of the weakest argument I have on that one. Uh, Heim Revi, elusive turrets. Mm -hmm. uh, Karma Ezreal, uh, Ezreal burst tar damage is interactable. Mm -hmm. Every all variants of burn. Um, the point is what has ha what has happened is as you take the kind of outlier strategic pieces out of the game, you have less and less incentive to do anything other than the default strategy. And the default strategy in a game where removal is bad is to do as little as you can to interact with your opponent because interacting is always weaker than just playing a game plan. Yeah. And as, if the game plans are all the same, then the game plan which kills your opponent the fastest will be the winning game plan. Yeah. So, so I think if, if if actually what I'm what I'm hearing and kind of gathering from all of this is correct is that it, it's not so much the nerfs; it's it's specifically the nerfs they've put to control tools. And the well, it's that... not just the nerfs they put to control tools, right? Because when they took the when they nerfed elusive, when nerfed elusives, they nerfed the most outlying elusive cards, which mm -hmm. made it so that. And the same is true about fearsome. So you were less incentivized to go like straight elusives and be more phys be more fragile, and in exchange for being even harder to interact with, and more incentivized to just do the elusives that did that did their damage and then trade it off, mm -hmm. right? 
I'm not saying elusive like it happens that the strategy that elusives was good at is also the central strategy, mm-hmm. but the elusive decks of yore, the ones that were really busted, were also very very themed and very and like looked unique, right? They had a very clear game plan okay. in a way that oh. modern elusive decks don't really look. Oh, Kinko Elusives looks pretty much like Kinko Elusives, but... All right, let me look at Kinko Elusives. There's, there's right. only been some no. mild change. All right, I, I see the point. Kinko Elusives is so good it hasn't changed no matter what happens. Yeah. Well, there was right. that other uh, there was that other Elusives deck that I played a lot of in beta. There was. Um, that, but the that's dead for one, a different reason. Which I, I, I don't know if... I don't actually know how much of that changed. I'm, I'm trying to think like what the changes were with the, the, that dropped that the deck. Big, hmm. It was uh, making standalone cost four mana. Oh yeah, it's probably standalone and then also back to back. Mostly yeah, standalone. Exactly. It's, it's the back to back. Yeah. The board buff tools that rely that require you to have control of a board. Yeah. To utilize. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. It's interesting. I think, you know, I just to add my little weight, I think it is, I think in general they've done a fine job, but I, I do see a lot of what Adam's saying, particularly with the interactive tools. Um, which I mean, and obviously of, I'm representing an extreme posi- extreme yeah. version of my point for the purposes of debate. Yeah. I, mean, I think that Riot have actually done the right thing a lot of times. I just think that there are a few egregious examples, or a few examples that stand out to me as places where this philosophy has hurt them as opposed to helping them speaking of yeah. egregious examples how about uh this thing i've been hearing about you guys you guys heard about this thing you guys you guys heard about this uh removal being over costed huh you guys you guys heard about this you guys heard about black spirit i feel Breeze? like yeah yeah that, that i've heard about that it's a problem for i'm me. doing a i'm doing a little bit of a jay leno here um i don't know why <laughs> But we actually have on our little uh, episode list, we have reduced cost removal. removal. We have Adam against it. Um, <laughs> I, felt, I, I felt it would be more interesting if I took that stance. I definitely agree with that. Uh, this is actually, let's honestly, let's just have your position against it because I think we already know your position for it and really all of our <laughs> positions for it. So I'd kind of rather just listen to you argue against your, a prior form of yourself. This is sort of like Mario Kart ghost mode. Kind of. <laughs> All right. With debate. So, uh, one of the things about Legends of Runeterra that really kind of sells it as a game is the constant board interaction. Uh, you know, you can play units on both turns. You can attack at any time in a turn. Uh, the defender chooses blocks, which is great for promoting interaction. The ideal form of Legends of Runeterra has a lot of board-based decisions, and those decisions are complex. Uh, They can be mastered, they can be improved in many different ways. Um, Knowing when to pass an attack with an attack up uh, because you don't need the attack or you'd rather threaten the attack later is a very important skill. Uh, Challenger units even further kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, refine this skill or test the skill test. There you Um, go. So overall, the best thing about Legends of Runeterra is the way the simultaneous turn structure and the attack token and passing create a interesting set of mind games around board and mana utilization. Um, removal kind of takes that away, right? The better removal is, the less the board matters because the easier it is to just make th- to just kill anything that's on the board. Uh, so if you spend, so the stronger removal is, you know, the less Runeterra is a good, distinct, unique game. Yeah. Um, so the the easiest example is if we use, like, magic numbers, right? Um, vengeance at three mana, th- th- that would be insane. That would, no card in the game would be, that cost more than, like, five would be playable in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. Um you can get away with with cheaper man, uh, with cheaper removal and magic because of the way uh, the turn structure works, right? Uh, one player gets a turn, then another player gets a turn. Uh, so as so, if you uh, you know spend your mana on your turn, your opponent gets to resolve a creature, right? They get to pl- they get something into play, whether or not you have removal. Whereas in Runeterra, because you always have mana and you always have agency and the ability to play, which I think is a good thing, especially for the way they've structured the game, um, 
you need the removal of the cost significantly more so that you don't always have the ability to just answer something because you always have the ability to right. do something. Um, so with that in mind, removal shouldn't cost less. Removal's in a great spot. We should uh, leave, leave removal untouched. Black Spirit Three was a great idea. Suck it past Adam. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah, that's a pretty good... I, I, I do think it's important to remember that uh, this is its own unique game. Magic is, you know... We can't just look to other games and be like one to one it because the one of the big things we do like about it the fact that it's uh, everyone takes a turn on a turn or round or whatever is a very big difference and you have to kind of design around that. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, I do think conditional removal like Black Sphere should be a little bit lower cost because the whole point is synergy. But yeah. uh, that's a really yeah. cool that was a really cool Ghost Mario Kart debate. Um, up next, we have. Net decking bad. Oh, this is. Oh, I love this. Oh, this is a, this is a tale as old as TCG time. Oh wow. Gosh. Uh, yeah, I mean this this pre this doesn't predate the internet. No, it actually does. But <laughs> we it actually, does. Actually, the first yeah the 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 phrase net decking. People think it comes from internet <laughs> decking. Actually, comes from the fact that. Uh, various rogue deck people would would uh, have their decks, their magic decks, in this large net with which to trap young children to play their different decks at tournaments. Oh, uh, I, I thought they would go out to a river and just catch a deck in a <laughs> net, and that would be kind of how they uh, assembled their, their cards. Yeah, it was actually di different. Yeah, different colloquialisms, right? Yeah, they would they would go out but... on a large commercial fishing boat, and they would just cast on a large <laughs> net. And whatever you know, random rares and bulk rares and and, and you know various uncommons they'd pull, they would play. Uh, yeah, fishing was much better in Seattle than it was in Philadelphia. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but in all honesty, though, this our, this debate actually does predate widespread use of the internet. Um, people argued about whether or not you should uh, copy decks from magazines back in the day when magazines were the primary way of disseminating information about card games. Oh, yeah, that's right. There was, uh, what was it, like Magic Quarterly or whatever, Magic Monthly? There's some... Uh, the Duelist. The Duelist, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. I guess technically it's but... technically net network decking, I guess is technically what it's called. <laughs> I suppose so. But now that we've got real internet, let's talk about real net decking. Um, let's start with Dan. What's your stance, Dan? Uh, I love net decking. Uh, as someone who does not, as, as someone who has a very high refined level of technical skill and someone who has a very uh, low desire to move cards around and uh, try to decide what to play, uh, and get owned five times before realizing what's meta. I just want to have the meta already solved so I can just technically outplay everybody, which I do every time. Um, so that's kind of my stance. So I'm, I'm very pro net decking because I don't want to take the time to craft my own deck. Um, I love that people want to make their own decks. Beautiful, but uh, there's such a thing as solving a meta, and I want it to be solved as fast as possible so I can beat everybody else. So to summarize, net decking because deck building is for someone else. Mm -hmm. Is for, is for a lesser player than you? Well, it's not necessarily a lesser player. I mean, someone that made the best deck had to make it, but I, it's just I play it better. Um, so it's like, why gotcha. bother? Yeah. All right, uh, Stan, do you have a. Can you uh, take the other side? Tell us why net decking is bad? Uh, well, net decking is obviously bad because, you know, Mind Meld isn't in any of the net <laughs> decks, and uh, Mind Meld's clearly the best card in the game, as we uh, will be showing on stream sometime very, I'm very soon. Still undefeated on the Mind Meld deck. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Um, uh, uh, that's, that's not the real reason, but, uh, you know, net decking, um, yeah, I'm just going to keep playing Devil's Agony here, even though I fucking love net decking. Um, that is how the baits work. <laughs> Yeah, it, I think it, uh, it sterilizes the game a little bit, you know? Like, you, you really just kind of look at your opponent and you go, oh, you know, you're playing the net deck too. I know everything you're doing. There's, there's no surprises here. You just drew the cards you needed and played the game. Oh, boy. Um, you know, I think that it's, uh, it's very important that there are people out there who aren't net decking because that's how the real surprise factor comes into the that's game. That's how the ELO's made, boys. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
You, you need people to not net deck so that you can have some fun in the game and get yourself into situations that you're not ready for. And sometimes so you can lose to someone's cheeky, cheeky combo that would never last in a tournament ever, but you happen to hit the time that they draw everything they need on ladder. These are very important parts of a TCG. Um, or a D DCG, digital, collectible, I mean, uh, blah, yeah, blah, blah, digital blah, card words. game. Uh, DCG, yeah, yeah. ILF. Digital card game I'd like to, uh, you know. Yeah, you know, whatever you want to pee Fight that I'd within. like to play. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, do battle with me, um, if you will. Do battle. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's very important. It's also where, you know, you get to come up with the coolest things and feel the best. Nothing feels better than winning with the deck that you created. Um, and, you know... There always has to be a period after patch where net decking isn't, you know, technically available. You've got that one to two day period where you've got to be the one to figure it out. Um, I mean, hell, just... if, we, if we had net decked, we'd never have Big Slamu. Exactly. And Big Slamu. Well, Whew. we would because I literally made the deck and then went online and realized I just made the exact same deck as like Swim or somebody had made like a, a, a day but... prior. Or like but two we hours did it prior. a little differently. <laughs> yeah, we did it worse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know that, that's why uh, that's why net decking is, um, you know, why not net decking is so important because then you realize that cards like Big Slamu are so good that even in the unoptimized version, they're fucking killer. You know, like these are these are really important ways to also get a feel for you know why a card should be banned because. If you just look at it in its kind of net-decked vacuum, you're just kind of like, oh yeah, that card's obviously good. But then when you see someone who isn't net-decking, who just threw that really good card, and you're like, oh wait, yeah, that card is just fucking busted. Because even in this unrefined piece of garbage I'm playing against, oh boy, I'm being really mean to non-net-deckers here, um, you, you know, you still get crushed by the card. And that's when you know, like, hey, something's got to change here. Um, I... I I will say that um, for me, you know, it's it's the net digging is not bad. Um, it is acceptable. So, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where I'm perfectly fine with people not doing it. But, um, you know, why why would I? Should we should we instigate a ban on all net deckers? Like, how can you even do? You oh. know. It's just like, Hell, come on, no, it's not, it's not we're, we're not talking about official action being taken. We're just fair talking point. about social condemnation. It's a fair point. Yeah. So, I, I, I do like the argument of acceptable versus unacceptable, because I can get Lemon Grab up in this bitch to just trash your argument if I need yeah, to. Yeah, fair point. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I, I just... I don't know, man. <laughs> I need to I need to net deck this 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 rebuttal apparently because I just can't I can't even. I was, I was gonna say we we really just kind of. Uh... Oh, actually, okay. Here it is. Yeah. So I mean, not not net decking. Yes, you do gain a sense of um, how to beat the meta, but I guess that is more of an, a thing of like, is it bad to do it from a learning perspective? Um, mm. and, and and to me, I don't think so because I think net decking from a learning perspective can actually be very useful because as someone Absolutely. who, um, this is just kind of, a, this is anecdotal, so it may not be, well, I think it's very emblematic of a lot of people's experience in card games. The first deck I ever made was a uh, tribal cleric deck in Onslaught Block MTG when I was seven years old. Uh, if you played that block, you know um, that was stupid. Um, what, you didn't just win every game by getting, <laughs> resolving an Edgewalker? Uh, I didn't. Well, I should clarify. I uh, <laughs> First off, I, I, I didn't know the good clerics. I just put a bunch of clerics in my deck and thought it'd be good <laughs> uh, until I realized that preventing one damage repeatedly did nothing when my opponent had 6,000 spiders sitting across the board. Uh, and that was kind of my first realization that, wow, you can't just put 40 cards into a deck and call it a day, or in that case it was 60 cards. Um, and when you get to when you don't know a game and you start playing a good deck after playing your bad net deck, because let, let, let's be honest, no one does or you playing your bad rogue deck. No one's first deck is ever good. When you play a good net deck and you like you 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 realize this is 
look at the synergy in these cards. You, 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 you start to pick up on the combos, the way cards work together, don't work together. Uh, you get to see maybe if it's a similar deck to one of your rogue decks, you get to see why they took out cards you didn't because their deck is a winning deck. And you get to see, like, it lets you evaluate cards in a more... Uh, a, a, a more productive manner because you see what wins and what loses because at the end of the day let's be honest we all want to win um we don't just want to express ourselves with our 40 car teemo decks although i think that <laughs> would be a very competitive deck um that's why i think net decking is good all right so net, net decking makes you a better player i like that take yeah i had um, to flip it around on them I mean, in reality, I think we're all pretty okay with net decking, but I, I do have to thank Stan for taking the against on that one. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It's a pretty annoying uh, one to do because most people that are against net decking are the most unsufferable fucking people in the world. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, guys. I don't. I don't care if you at me. Dan, don't don't I, alienate I, the one viewer we have. I don't care. Okay, that, that <laughs> they they suck so much. I would I would I would rather not get your business. I hate people that hate net deckers. You're so you're the worst. You're the worst people. Let people play the game the way they want to. I'm not taking any anything away from your enjoyment <laughs> allegedly. So yeah. allegedly, well, yeah, because they just want to win with their shit. <laughs> They're like, yeah. oh, if I can't win with my doo doo deck, I don't want to play. It's like, okay, then find something else to do with your life yeah. besides that's, complaining. That's what the ladder structure is there to fix. When exactly, doo doo deck can't get up to play with the other big boys. Okay, just... how about this? Riot detects uh, it'll detect that you have a rogue deck and through some various magic. And it puts you into a separate ladder where no one's playing any deck composed of more than 60% of cards that are on the ladder, like on the top tier in the master's cards. And then you basically only get to play with 10 <laughs> cards. And then you realize there's another meta in uh, that one, and you are start complaining yeah. about it's just like the stupidest stuff. Anyways, let's continue. Okay, now, now that we've uh, successfully <laughs> alienated our viewer base, perhaps. <laughs> It's time to take on some more serious debates now that we've gotten the kind of yeah. light, easy debates out of, out of yeah, the way. Yeah, kind of the trash out of the way. So, th this one we're going to have to... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to assign sides. Uh, Stan, who's Swoller, mm -hmm. Darius or Draven, and why is mm -hmm. it Darius? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, cool. Damn it. Uh, and, okay, so that means Dan has uh, Draven. Draven. Dan has Draven. Yeah, I can I can uh, wrap this up real quick for you, a little three three over there. Um, yeah, I knew you're gonna get that first, you fucking punk ass bitch. Ten six, baby. <laughs> um, uh, I'm pretty sure I can dunk and you can't. That's like Darius's whole thing. I dunk on people with an axe, um, a big axe, mind you, not your little, you know. Oh, I can motion of the ocean axe. Um, got a big axe. I slam things. Um, might come down a little later, but that's not the point. I'm there when I want to be, and I do what I need to do. Uh, definitely swoller. So much swoller. Hypocrite that Remote you are. Man. I just did image analysis on both of these cards, and um, I, I see that Draven's muscle mass, pixel by pixel, is 2.1% larger than uh, Darius's muscle mass. So... You know, ipso facto, he is more swole. And a second point for you, a little one-two punch. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Draven's picture. Um, looks like he's ensconced with a, a lovely lady who is absolutely enraptured by his charm. Let's look at Darius's picture. Oh, he looks very forlorn looking about the war, like he has to go do a war. Uh, let's see, who's going to be more turgid? Uh, in the in the pants region, right about now, who's more swole in the pants region, Draven or Darius? Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure the answer is Draven, baby. Uh, Stan, do you have a short rebuttal to to Dan? He doesn't. He knows he doesn't. He does. He lost. It's over. That's it. Silence. Look at that. I did it. My axe is still bigger than yours, bud. That's all I got. Yeah. I have a big axe, bud. Does it? It doesn't it's, matter how big it is. It just matters how engorged it is. All right. Look, it's look, it's my whole identity, bro. My whole identity is this giant axe, and you had to come in here and break everything I've worked for. Come on. 
Come on, bud. That's just cruel. I'm more swole because I can admit to my feelings that I'm... Wow. That, Are you going yeah. for a swole heart? This, yep. Mm. I got a swole heart. This is very out of character. I don't know if I can keep this up. Yeah, I, this is a pretty... I can kind of feel... I pulled up the Darius art to try and like channel him through me, and he's yeah. looking at me like, stop right now. Yeah, this, is, now, this honestly is a very unconvincing is... roleplay. Yeah. Um, sorry, dude. Sorry, I was trying to get that brotherly love going. I mean, like nah. I, I felt like maybe that would get somewhere, but I don't nah, think welcome we're to ready Noxus, for that. Baby. All that matters yeah, is we're not ready for that fanfic yet. Is chopping up and is chopping up the enemies and uh, chopping up the ladies, but in a but, very know, wholesome, loving way. Uh, I don't solve my battles with words. I solve them on the battlefield like a real small man would. So you know, you can uh, take me here if you want, but uh, meet me on the field, bitch. Well, I guess I'll leave that for another time. <laughs> All right. Uh, looks like we can't resolve that debate, so we're going to move on to the next one. Um, so uh, who wants to moderate this next one? Because I have opinions. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, go for I it. I got Sam. it. Let's let's go. Adam. Uh, Take Noxus, your position. Not enough burn or just too weak burn? <laughs> All right. I, I think <laughs> this is really, really clear. I'm always in favor of more cards in the game, so the clear answer is not enough burn. Mm. Right? You know, Noxus, you got, like, really at this point, it's like, what, half of your deck it does direct damage? And, like, maybe you can count the Overwhelm, but, like, even then, you don't get more than, like, two-thirds. That's just not enough burn. You gotta be able to make a deck that is 40 cards of burn without leaving Noxus. Fuck that Piltover Zon copycat crap. We don't need any of that. <laughs> We need a Noxian burn. 40 fucking cards. No limit hold them. <laughs> Love that. Love that. Um, yeah. That's my case. So, you know, so, so tell me why this burn is just too weak, Dan. Yeah, so let's go ahead and look at a very, I think, a very important card. Um, you know, I think, I think what Adam is confused by, first off, let me just go ahead and say this, is that the phrase not enough burn is technically correct he's right but it's really that you need to you need to put that burn into fewer and fewer cards to concentrate the burn power you know like putting your hand over um putting your hand over one one ice cube you know whatever it's just it's just a little water ice cube but what if you smash that ice cube this isn't how science works. What if you smash that ice cube into a CO2 dry ice block and put your hand over it? It might freeze. Um, so let's go ahead and look at Decimate. Five mana deal four to the enemy Nexus? Um, last time I played Magic, it was uh, one mana for three damage. Uh, so I think we're gonna need to put this five mana, flip those numbers at least, and probably multiply that five by two. Make this four, four mana, 10 damage spell. And uh, concentrate the burn you're gonna see a much better game, you know? Let's make, how about this? Let's make one card that just does 20 damage to the enemy nexus and it costs like three mana. Great game. Boom, solved it. But what do you do with the rest of your deck if you've got that card in it? Like the, Well, the, you try to beat the 40 card Timo deck, dude. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty oh, simple. I see the point. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to develop a very good meme meta. Ryan won't let me do it. All right, up next, what's up next? What do we got? All right. Uh, I, I guess uh, since I'm the person who doesn't play elusives, I don't get to I don't get to have an opinion on this one. Uh, Dan and Stan, should elusives be able to block elusives? Now I know that I've in the past been very adamant about elusives needing to be uh, nerfed in certain ways, but it's called elusive. Just because someone else is elusive doesn't mean they get to block you. That is just bad grammar. Just that, like why, why? That's not what that means at all. That in Magic, flying made sense. Flying things can fight flying things. But just because two people are elusive, that's just two ships passing in the night. They should be on opposite sides of the goddamn map. Um, no, elusive should not be able to block elusives. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Call it something else. All right, Dan. Uh, what is your opinion on elusives being able to block elusives? Uh, yes, they should, but only if they trip. Um, and that means that the attacking elusive has to make some sort of blunder 
Um, so what, what we need to do is we need to add everybody's favorite mechanic into the game, uh, more RNG. Uh, every time an elusive attacks, you roll a, a D100, and then any even number on a Tuesday, uh, that is a blunder. Uh, otherwise, it is a successful attack, and elusives cannot be blocked. So, sort of a sort of a mixed bag here, but the answer is yes, but only sometimes. All right, okay. all right. Uh, I, I would say I would ask Stan for a rebuttal, but as Stan pointed out, this is just two shits passing in the night. <laughs> mm-hmm. Unless it's Tuesday nice. and they've rolled evens, I can actually. I think we agree on this. That is pretty perfect because even if you're elusive, sometimes you make a mistake. And, uh, you know, when you make that mistake, everybody gets to block you now. And All Tuesday right. Tuesday is ripe for mistakes. That's just... Our yeah. experts agree, right? Ship it. Should yep. deep cards be down? What does this mean? Should deep cards be down pitch when you're deep? Oh, this oh, is, this is clearly a problem. Like, have you, when you, have you listened to deep cards when you play them? So uh, you play them, and they've got, uh, they've got their line. Okay, this is hilarious. When, when you're normal, it's, you just... <laughs> <laughs> you got it, they got in the line, right? And that makes sense. Everyone else has a line when they're normal. But then these are deep right, cards. Understand. You play them again, and they're no deeper when you're deep. That's just a flavor fail, man. <laughs> All right. I've actually got a, I've yep. got a very strong stance on this. The answer is no. They shouldn't be down pitched because that's not what happens when you're deep. When you're deep, you, the implication is that you're very far underwater. So you need to crush the card into tiny micro pieces. And also, you need to talk like like this because you're underwater. So basically, I need you to sort of uh, simulate the effects of very high pressure. Um, also, if you gain cards onto your deck, I need you to uh, check for the bends. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure how that's going to work mechanically. My guess is you that just bend randomly the cards. creatures they, they just sort of die if they don't get decompressed. Um, no, no, they're cards. They just get a 90-degree bend. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nice. Um, but the answer is no. They should just be uh, pressurized. Um, yeah. Stan, uh, I think this, this one deserves a third take. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. There's got to be a third way to this debate. Um, they, oh, you know. boy, what else? Oh, man. Um, I think that um, when you go deep, you should... Uh, like the cards don't need to be changed you just need to submerge yourself in water as well and play like your cards mm. um, if I've learned anything from Yu-Gi-Oh uh, the TV which show specifically not the, the card game oh which is everything you know, yeah uh, you you can um, you can be friends with your cards and you can do things to be more friendly with your cards so obviously if you want your deep deck to win you need to be like your deep cards and submerge yourself in water when you go deep so uh, probably need some, uh, much like that other item that was going to come from Riot, um, the gauntlets that they're supposed to ship out to everybody, they need to send out the Riot brand uh, deep bucket that lets you submerge your entire playset into water so that you can, uh, you know, really get in tune with your deep deck. And speaking of, um, we actually just got an email right here, hot off the presses from Riot. Uh, they will be sending us our... our uh, certified riot deep bucket to do a twitch stream in for a deep deck um yeah. so you guys can look forward to that soon we will be uh whenever we go deep we will be you know dunking ourselves into uh water sort of like those, also, those um carnival hit a ball things you know Dunk also tanks. voice yes voice chat should open up when you go deep and your voice should be synthesized as deep as humanly possible absolutely really happen there yeah absolutely uh, muy importante and also, like it's underwater. I yes. Because you'll be underwater. <laughs> yeah. Hit him with the melt effect, baby. Um, all right. Next up, uh, we got a little question about Draven, guys. All right. We got <clears throat> Draven or Draven? Uh, who's more Draven? Also, what is Draven? Is he a mere concept or a human? Discuss. The essence of Draven is singularly Dravenness. It is the that sort of raw charisma that walks into the room and makes people say, damn, he's Draven. Can we, and can with we, that in mind, can we all agree that the, say, the, the most realistic Draven uh, that we've ever seen in real life <laughs> is uh, Tyler One? Is that his name? The guy that only plays Draven on League of Legends? That guy? Mm-hmm. He is basically um, Draven. 
Sorry, but, he, he's got some Draven. He's got some Draven. But I have to say that the most Draven Draven is Draven. Oh, wow. We switched that. You, you gotta listen. Listen to how it rolls. It, it's, it's the real deal. That Draven. That's the most Draven. Mm-hmm. And you know it's the most Draven because when I said it, the world just kind of slowed down a bit for you. You know you felt it. That's yeah, the there power is... of Draven. <laughs> Yeah, there was there was a guy on the side of the road. Actually, he just looked at me and just kind of like he just kind of nodded at me and gave me a thumbs up when he when he when he heard the 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 micro decibels of you saying that you know reach his ear. He was just like, yeah, brother. Um, okay, Stan, Draven, just just Draven. How is that more Draven? Well, it's more Draven because you can a lot more easily. Um, say that's so draven Ooh, okay and oh, yeah no. <laughs> i think you just blew this debate wide open yep and <laughs> i mean that is so draven it's the future i can see yeah um, and i'm pretty sure draven 2020 is just the that's the, the slogan we got everything. you're starting you're, um, you're, you're starting to lose me i think uh, i think i think we need to stick with a that's so draven <laughs> i think you really could have just said that and moved on i could have just said that and moved <laughs> any on, more words I, you're saying are actually hurting your case at this point uh yeah but you know that's a that's pretty much my argument right there that's i can a, respect that it's a very good argument honestly um yeah all right I, I think that I've been defeated by that so Draven I have to acknowledge it and, and just move on yep mm-hmm. so uh, um, one final question open to uh, Stan and Dan and also to our viewers if you want to chime in uh, in the comment section yeah if you want to chime in right now uh, on the podcast and call us up <laughs> yeah if you can call us well, like well, figure out what we're doing let me know <laughs> alright yeah, the question is our, uh, Discord Poros here. Yordles the Noxian Crimson Harem or Lux Oh, okay. Which is the most anime? Uh, caveat: Is Imperial Demolitionist part of yes. the uh, Crimson? Oh yeah, yes, yes, one hundred percent. Just because she, she, yeah, then it's the Crimson Harem because she's the only actual anime character. She just, she's just an anime. She's just a fucking anime character, just flat out. Yes, but you do have to weigh that with the fact that she is c- surrounded by multiple characters that are not that are very much not anime looking. Um, yeah. Although I will say that the Crimson Curator does look like probably the most typical consumer of anime and otaku mm. culture. Um, that does help. And it's the most likely to look like uh, it's the sort of kind of guy that I would imagine would say net decking was bad. Anyways, my answer <sighs> is that uh, it's actually Lux. Um, the reason being is simple. First off, I just Googled Lux. And the first thing that came up was Riot's official image of her. And she looks mad anime. The third image, mad anime. Honestly, even the Rune Terra art is pretty dang anime. She looks like one of those magical girl animes. Um, you know, second off, I feel like if I type in favorite waifu, I don't even have to do it. If I type in favorite waifu from LOL, it's going to be Lux. All right? Let's be honest. She's the most anime girl here. Mm, all right what okay when, when i google lux i see exactly one anime lux outside of that i see like comic book characters stan you it's are domestic. you are so embedded in anime culture that you don't know what anime is you're you are, you are way character. too pure you're way too puritanical with your anime um uh, yep that's definitely what you it are is, you are way too gatekeepy doubt. about your anime which is fine that's exactly what an anime type person would do but I'm just telling you, every single picture I see is so anime that it makes me, uh, it makes me reel. My mind reels. What is your take, Adam? Um, I gotta represent the Yordles. Like, Hell yeah. is there anything more <laughs> anime than Hell small yeah. furry people? Furries. <laughs> like That's small furry ma- Like, how many Yordles are like the iconic anime mascot character? Yeah, then, you know they kind of are. Even even, like... even more than Porez, actually. Like you've got historical anime and Doraemon, you've got uh, you've got My Neighbor Totoro, you've got Miyazaki's like the big one. You've got like uh, all magical girl animes have at least one cute pseudo cat thing with in- ex- yep. incessantly large eyes that inexplicably talks. So even if Lux is anime, that makes the Yordles even more anime. 
uh, in all harem yeah. anime, there is inexplic- inexplicably a small furry one. There's a cat girl, and Yordles are also cat girls. Like, like it, Yordles are everything, man. Yordles are not just one type of anime. They're every type of anime. Wait. Yeah, Adam's is right on this Henry? one, actually. I was wrong. If you Google Yordle, it is... Yeah. Unseemly Wait, what these people are doing to these small, is, young, lovely, lovely creatures. Heimerdinger's a Yordle? Yes. Heimerdinger is a Yordle with just way too much hair. Huh. I've, I've learned something today. That's. Huh. I mean, like, and that's for a race of people defined by the fuzz everywhere. Heimerdinger somehow still has too much hair. Yeah, I, I didn't realize that Heimerdinger and Timo were the same species for some reason. Like, that's a lot of fucking hair. Um, Apparently Ratchet from Ratchet and Clank is a Yordle, too. But I don't know if that's, like, a lead character or if, um... Is that Gyrocopter from Dota? What is going on right now? Uh, that is Corky, and he does in, he is, in fact, a Yordle in a helicopter. Or gyrocopter. <laughs> so I am looking at the Yordle Google search. Just I think I just Google search Yordle. Um, and this is a message. This is as much as it's going out to um, DeviantArt.com. I don't know who you are, but you need to stop drawing all of these sexualized Yordles. All right. I don't know who you are, but your entire website seems to be dedicated to sexualizing these sweet little creatures. Stop it, DeviantArt, whoever you are. Um, so I have to ask, isn't that the most anime thing ever? It is. Like I've, yeah. I already have switched my side. I am on Yordle. I am on Team Anime Yordle because that is the most. It, it's. It was immediately obvious to me I was wrong, the second that yep. I hit return on the search. Jesus, I'm so unsettled. Um, <laughs> you know, we got we got one one more little thing here. Um, you guys haven't noticed. Uh, army, the army's recruitment numbers have been down lately. Um, now this could be a number of reasons, you know, uh, quarantine business, it's a growing trend of younger and younger people not wanting to be involved in the army. Um, so, the army has decided to combat these low numbers with uh, esports uh, tournaments. You can join the army's esport team for a variety of games, uh, including Rainbow Six Siege. Um, in which I asked, uh, well, I'm not going to get into that, but I got banned from the uh, Army's esports Twitch chat uh, for asking a very reasonable question. So let's 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 go ahead and think. What do we? Think? I don't know what you asked, but I can only imagine that it was well deserved. It was very well deserved. Um, it was very well deserved. What do we think? Like so, so Army esports people, they're pulling from the call the 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 Call of Duty players right now, right? Because that's that's really where I think they imagine their main market is but i would i would argue that maybe there's a type of person that would like to join the army um the, the army's esport teams for 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 runeterra how do we think the army should entice runeterra players to not only join their esports teams but recruit up what do we think what do we think you should do we're doing some free we're doing free marketing research for the army uh, now So, I mean, I'm pretty sure it's not that different from normal army commercials. You uh, say a bunch of things that are kind of overblown statements about how much you get to travel Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, how much experience you get for the real world. Mm -hmm. What about this? uh, What if they they, uh, recreate a Yu-Gi-Oh battle in real life and there's actually guns and it's on Twitch? Why? (laughs) Huh? What if what if they what if they do that? Would that be good? Would that be something that we think would get people? That would not to... be good, Dan. Okay. Uh, I have to say no. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's gonna work the way we want it to at all. You don't think that uh, would look really cool to make a real life Yu Gi Oh? You don't think that would entice some kids? Like, wow, I get to be real life Yu Gi Oh. So What do these do kids want these days? Where guys? the army has bases? The hmm. army has bases in Japan. In oh. South Korea. True. And China. True. These are the hubs of Eastern Asian culture. Okay. If you want to recruit Legends of Runeterra players to the army, all you have to do is tell them that they have all the anime characters just five minutes off the base, and all you have to do is get through basic training, and you can live there. 
Yeah, that's unfortunately actually a really good idea. Uh, I think we accidentally just gave them a good strategy. Uh, I might edit this out because I don't want to give them anything. Uh, <laughs> I think you accidentally did a good job. Uh, I was trying to come up with terrible ideas that they might latch on to. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think Furthermore, of if you're trying to recruit internet culture, remember, the army is one of the last few uh, remaining bastions of institutional homophobia. And you know internet nerds like Ooh. calling each other gay. I mean, in the that army, you true. can call anyone gay. Although now it is kind of at a weird point where I feel like there's a bit of a, a, bit of a, of a reclamation of the word online. So they're going to be in a weird territory, you know? It's going to be kind of one of those weird things where no one knows if the army's winking at it or if they're being serious. Or... Hey, the army's recruiting weebs. It's already in a weird territory. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's true. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, huh. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's the way we'll end this yes. one. Yes, um, yes, yes. <coughs> no, don't, don't, don't end on, on my mocking the army. Don't end on that. <laughs> don't end on us mocking the army? Um, I think no, that's no, the not, best not, way No, can... the mocking the army, it's not the issue. Don't end on, on me trying to trot out homophobia as though it's something the army should recruit on. It just We have to have something better. Um, we, I, I don't want humanity think... to be that bad. <laughs> Wow. I think I think we go back to the Yu-Gi-Oh battle with guns. That actually does sound kind of cool. I don't know what the guns are there for, but I mean, well, like, wasn't that how the original Yu-Gi-Oh did it? Was that they like, had real guns like, in the thing or something? Like, like Dark Magician just shot up a blue eyes right quick. Didn't the people that played the Yu-Gi-Oh card game in the show have guns? They just like edited no. it out of the four kids version or something. No, they didn't. Uh, I think you're thinking of Yu-Gi-Oh before it was a card game where like Yu-Gi was just like running up to bitches who he didn't like and was like, hey, I'm going to challenge you to a quick game. You're going to hold a gun to me and I'm going to make you shoot yourself with one finger and he, like, throws a match at him or some shit like that. Huh. Like, okay, um, well, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of what... Let's see. Runeterra players, they like cards. They like strategy. They like little cute things. Honestly, I still think Adams is the best one. Adams is definitely the best one. Just convince them to go to. Just convince them that we got all the we got Lux and Yordles and uh, you know do all that stuff. You're you're gonna be an ultimate Draven Darius if you just do basic. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, for Run the Terra, I've been uh, Grandmaster Dan. I've been Adam Edelman Munoz. And I've been Stan Jaruszewski. And we'll still be with people next time, and uh, we'll see you then.